Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to today's second half. Before we get into today's second half, a couple links I'd like to share. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below, my merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1, 2, and 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, click the like button, and please leave a comment. It really does help, and it does matter. And now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with tonight's second half. Shall we? Briefly, before we get into these encounters, I have always admitted when I was wrong or if I misunderstood something. And I saw a couple comments in the comment section about the plane accident in Virginia near Beartown. The email that I had gotten, I misread the plane numbers. I said B-52. It was actually a B-25. Uh, the subscriber who sent me that email also sent me their encounter, but heard that I said B-52. So my eyes must have switched the five and the two and the two and the five because I've never heard of a B-25, B-52. And the gentleman who heard the DNR agents communicating, it was, he said shortwave, um, but it was a ham radio and you do need a license for a ham radio. Uh, you don't need one if you are listening to a ham radio and there is no way of communicating with others, but if you have a ham radio with a device uh, to communicate with others, then you do need a license. So I just wanted to correct the mistakes that I made and uh, I do it every once in a while, so. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, I apologize. Let's get into some encounters. Tonight's first experience comes to us from South New Jersey, Rancocas State Park. I experienced something that does not make any sense. I'm very fond of walking in the woods at night. I always feel calm and peaceful when I do this. I've done this for years on multiple different trails without anxiety or paranoia. This particular place, I've had a few peculiar experiences. Years ago, when I first started coming, I met something I call the off people. I've never experienced vivid hallucinations outside of this space. These things look like generic people in colorful modern clothing and always approach me from in front on the path walking within arm's reach. They stare for an uncomfortable amount of time, and when they walk past, are gone. It is very difficult to maintain a gaze on them, and I always have a feeling I need to divert my eyes. Something feels fundamentally off about them, but I've never felt afraid, just kind of dumbfounded and uneasy. Initially, I just convinced myself it was wooks being wooks and I really need a nap. But, in the third time it happened, I began to understand something is happening here that I cannot understand and maybe I should be weary of. So after three years of Rancocas State Park being my spot, I got spooked off of the land. Jump three months later, I decided to come back after having unshakable thoughts that I belonged in that place. I wish I didn't. 
I came later than usual around two in the morning, started at my usual trailhead and began to routinely walk, emphasizing control of my breathing in an attempt to let go of my internal monologue and ground myself completely. No weird feeling, no feeling of being watched, no feeling of being unwanted. After rounding a bend half mile in, I saw a deer looking away from me. I thought it was a beautiful, peaceful moment, so I stood and stared. Then something happened that I do not understand. It looked at me and it had the face of a human child. Immediately, I couldn't move, and not from some mystic force, but from shock of seeing something that's still impossible to rationalize. It moved toward me slowly, almost cautiously, until it was no more than ten feet away. It didn't move like a deer. It seemed almost like a bead-filled plushie, bending in places without joints moving in a way that was not possible for a body of a deer. It maintained eye contact the entire time as it bent up at the waist like a human standing straight up. Not one sound, not a growl, not a chirp, just staring at me. I backed away, sprinted to my car. It didn't follow me, nor did it move as I ran. This whole interaction was no more than half a minute. Now I've been telling myself that this area must have a gas leak, making me hallucinate because it's easier than accepting that I saw something not canically fitting, the known natural world. I don't think I'll be walking in the woods for a while. When I try to assign meaning to this, I just don't have words. You know, instantly after reading this, I instantly thought about Paul, Paul Pedersen, who has been researching the Jersey Devil and the Pine Barrens for a long time. Paul, if you hear this, message me, please. I want to talk to you about this. Today's second encounter, I was jungle perch fishing at the Black Rock Waterfall in Mowbray, far north Queensland. To get to the waterfalls, you have to walk up the creek that eventually leads to the waterfalls. That walk is about three kilometers long. There is no set path to take, so you find yourself walking up on both creek sides or in the actual creek itself. Plenty of rock hopping and waving through water. That's about chest deep. Going up was immaculate, caught lots of fish, recharging myself from the stress life. It was raining and there was no one else for the whole day in the area apart from one family that passed me because I took my time fishing each deeper hole for jungle perch. The family had already made their way to the top then left when I was still making my way up, so I was truly alone then. Once I had gotten to the main waterfall, I had a bit of rest and relaxed there for a bit. All was well until I started to get this unnerving feeling that something or someone was watching me. I mostly brushed this off because you tend to get these types of feelings being alone in the bush. After my rest, I started making my way down the creek. However, the feeling did not leave. It wasn't overwhelmingly strong, so I kept on brushing it off. I decided that I would only fish the main pools that I had some luck in on the way up. Also, you don't catch as many jungle perch downstream due to them mostly looking upstream for prey. After walking about 300 meters from the main waterfall, I wasn't getting much luck, so I sat down on a flat spot and changed the lure on my rod. This is when it started to get very strange. As soon as I stood up, I had this unearthly smell fill my nostrils. It's something you can't describe. Personally, it felt more like an experience rather than a direct smell from something, if that makes sense. If I was going to compare it to a smell, it would be similar to a real bad smelling sweat mixed with rotten flesh, fruit, and wet car carpet slash dog. After a half a second of smelling this, I instantly went into the very confused trance. I didn't know where I was briefly, and I felt very confused and lightheaded. I would say this lasted for around four to five seconds, but it could have been longer as I didn't really have the sense of time during it. I remembered snapping out of this trance I was in while looking at my rod. 
The instant I snapped out of it, I felt all the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Some people say this is a play on words or an expression, but this feeling was different. My upper back and neck went extremely tingly, and I could literally feel my neck hair stand up. This was paired with the most intense, get the F out, feeling I had ever experienced. It wasn't just a instinctive, horrible feeling. It was pure doom, like all the fear in the world was projected onto me in one single shot. I knew instantly that whatever did not want me here, I knew that in my whole entire being. I was so convinced something was there that I verbally apologized for being there and said I was leaving. The trouble was, it was 2.7 kilometers back to my car and moving downstream is a lot harder than upstream. So it was a very long, painful, and paranoid walk back. The whole way it felt like someone or something was following, watching me. I thought I heard a scream or screech on two occasions, but... It was so hard to tell with the loud gushing water. With each step I moved away from the initial spot that the experience happened. That feeling would subside. I was about three quarters of the way back to my car and I gained enough courage and curiosity to see if I could maybe communicate with whatever it was or at least catch a glimpse of what was there. I stopped and turned around and was about to walk upstream, literally about to take my first step when the feeling of intense doom punched me in the face again, but with only about a quarter of the strength from the first time. It was like it was warning me again not to come back. With that, I accepted my fate and made my way back to my car, still shaken from what just happened. As I was walking on the off-road back to the car, the owner of the nearby property was near the entrance, and was about to mow his lawn. I stopped for a chat and asked him if he had any weird experiences around the area. He looked at me with a cheeky smile and blatantly said, I wasn't the only one that has had an experience like that here. He said that around five times a year he will be stopped by a shaken tourist or local. That has just soiled their jocks. He said around the same time last year, a couple had a very similar experience to mine. He seems to think it's around the wet season when there aren't many people on the track. He mentioned that at night he had heard what he thought were pigs screaming around his yard. Said it didn't sound like a pig, but that's what he logically thought. Then as he went to check for any crop or ground destruction from them in the morning, there was nothing. He also had moments when the curlews would be going off and their nutters screaming. Then all the birds would fly away from the trees in just an eerie silence. He mentioned there have been many Yahweh or Australian Bigfoot sightings around this area. I found out later from an Aboriginal elder living in the Mowbray area that that was sacred land to the Aboriginal people and men were not meant to go there as it was a birthing place for women. After my experience, I had to sit in my car and collect my thoughts on what had just happened. Away from the area, of course, thinking about going back with a mate in the near future. Today's Third Encounter I am Indian and our village is in Rajasthan. Now Rajasthan is a state with desert, and my village was like only a large-scaled open land with very less vegetation. I was born in the city, but we used to go to the village frequently. My family was very conscious not to let me forget our roots. So as we used to visit the village frequently, I had many friends there, and we used to play on the open vast land in the evenings before dark as it is hot in the day and dangerous at night. Danger from not only animals and evil humans, but from some creepy creatures too, and I encountered one. So, it was a normal evening. Me, my cousin, and my friends were playing, and obviously when you play with your friends you tend to shout and make a lot of noise. 
So when it was dark, we all went to bed. I woke up by some clicking sound. It was annoying. I became fascinated by it and woke my cousin up who was sleeping right next to me and asked him what it was. He had no idea, so I asked him if we should go out and see what it is. He was elder to me, and being a village boy going out at night following some strange noise is not a good idea. So we just went towards the main gate of the house and sat there listening to the sound. Now this clicking was not a sound of something, but someone was making this clicking sound with its tongue. We were trying to listen as the sound felt like it was going slowly away from us. As we were trying hard to listen, suddenly there was a scream, followed by my voice calling my cousin Jagdish, like I call him when we are playing from the side of our house. We both freaked out and ran where the elders were sleeping. We all were sleeping together in the open. The adults are already awake by listening to the scream. My uncles made us all sit together and pray after telling us that this is a creature known as the Shalava. People living in the village have encountered it a few times. Nobody has ever seen what it looks like because its true body was not known to anyone. They either copy our voices, similar to a skinwalker, or copy your body, something like a doppelganger. Even though you can distinguish the person and the creature as it feels like it is a worn suit, similar to your body, naked. So yeah, me and our family just sat and prayed while listening to the creature screaming my cousin's brother's name in my voice. Today's third experience. During a school break, my mom, myself, and one of my older brothers went to visit an uncle on his ranch in Nevada. I was having trouble sleeping, so I decided to take a walk around the perimeter of the ranch, just for some air. I had made it all the way to the other side of the ranch, to the far end of the pastures, from the last fence to the wooded hill. I decided to stay and look into the grassy area, look up at the stars. What no one had told this city girl was with no trees or lights, save for the barn on the other side of the ranch, you can see so many stars it was breathtaking to see the universe like that. I started whistling and I heard a branch crack, so I stopped, startled a little. Then something else started to whistle right at me. I froze, and it seemed like every hair on my body stood straight up. I couldn't move and the whistling got louder and closer. It was the almost exact same nonsensical melody I was whistling not 15 seconds before. I know what you're thinking, but OP, birds are a thing, BS. I know the difference between a bird and whatever the hell this was, and this is not over yet, so buckle up. I, the stupid white girl in the horror movie, decided to say, uh, hello. Something said, uh, hello, right back in my own voice. And yeah, I know what my voice sounds like. Slightly raspy, faint Bronx accent, usually lower pitched unless I'm excited or mad. Then it's usually so high pitched my friends say I sound like Harley Quinn or Adderall. Another branch snapped and that was my cue to book it back down around the paddocks back to the barn to the main house, which was about two acres. It was like a blur. I have knee issues from a car accident, but... I didn't feel even an ache as I sprinted all the way back to the main house. I still have no idea what this is. I didn't tell anyone else, despite my mom being extremely superstitious. I did a little frantic googling the day after, and the closest thing I could come up with was Skinwalker. I'm still freaked, and it happened in February of this year. Today's fourth experience... I've never really had any paranormal experiences, and I cannot explain this. I'm in college, and me and some of my friends from school went on a backpacking trip. We had two experienced leaders. We drove to the Zaleski State Forest, which is in the Appalachian region of Ohio. It was early April this year, and it was cold and everything was still dead from winter. After hiking miles into the forest, we set up camp at the backpacking campsite. And there were a couple other groups of people as well. 
a few of them were friendly, older couples, and then two college-age girls. Everyone was pretty spread out from each other. We set up camp further away from everyone else. I've always been able to sense energies in places, and the energy in this area was not great. It was almost spooky. Each of us had individual one-person tents, and we formed kind of a cluster in the site, with my tent being in the back so no one was behind me. Our cluster was also right next to the forest because this backpacking site was like a big cleared-off square in the middle of trees. Fast forward, I'm dead asleep around 2 in the morning. I wake up to leaves crunching right behind my tent. I hear footsteps walking in circles around my tent. They had a sort of heaviness to them. That couldn't be a deer or a dog. Also, it sounded like it was on two legs. I cannot make this up. This creature was circling my tent for long periods of time, slowly creeping up to the sides of my tent and then just stopping for periods of time and then would move on to walking around the rest of the tent cluster. I could hear a human-like breathing from the mouth when it was close to my tent, like a light sort of heaving. I was shaking, too scared to unzip my tent and investigate. I kid you not, this occurred for hours, and it seemed like I was the only one awake. Out of nowhere, I see an illuminated light shape from my tent. Although I couldn't tell what it was from inside the tent because it was all zipped up, it was like a warm glow. I might have assumed it was someone's flashlight except no one was moving. I was paralyzed in fear. I simply couldn't believe it was an animal. At some point, I fell asleep due to sheer exhaustion, but I could hear that heavy footstep circling until I did. In the morning, I questioned my fellow campers about it, and my leader admitted she had heard footsteps and noises as well, admitting it was bizarre, and she would have investigated had she not been so groggy. One of the boys in the group said he also noticed the light had come on, but thought it was someone else. Not a single person in this group went up to go to the bathrooms or turned on a light that night. I've heard things about the Appalachian regions being creepy and bizarre, and now I believe it. Tonight's final experience. I used to be obsessed with anything paranormal, but I lost interest as I got older. I used to believe in any crap I'd see on those History Channel shows about Bigfoot and UFOs. It's not like I think any of this is impossible, but I'm just much harder to convince now. I try to look at any footage or pictures of this stuff rationally. Usually, the simplest explanation is the explanation. Ironically, I saw something that no matter how hard I try, I cannot explain. Years ago, I was at a party at a house surrounded by woods, miles and miles of isolated Pennsylvania mountains. I got bored and asked a cousin if he wanted to go for a walk. As we left the property, we had to go down a pretty deep slope that was crowded out by rusted old cars that had been there for over a decade. We found a clearing with a shack that looked like someone was in the process of demolishing it. After looking inside, we went back to the party to grab my younger brother. This was back when I was still pretty invested in the paranormal. So before I walked into the clearing again, I got a camera ready on my phone, just in case. The sun was starting to set, and as we left the tree line, I saw it. Something streaked in front of me. It was a small, bluish orb. And honestly, the best way I could describe it was like fairies in Okrina of time. Except it moved so much faster, it was only there for a second, fading in and then fading out, almost faster than I could react. I managed to take a picture, but I thought to myself, there is no way I managed to get that. With the sun going down, we had to investigate the shack quickly and I took a few more pictures of the inside and hurried out. When we got back, I looked through the photos to my absolute shock. I had managed to get whatever the heck this was. The photo came out strange, though. The photo was more like an elongated blob of bright, bright white and yellow. Surprisingly, no one seemed to believe me, other than a couple close friends who were into weird crap, too. Everybody told me I was mistaken, and one even accused me of fabricating it. 
The worst one was my dad. This dude will believe any fringe idea or conspiracy theory. For example, he's got that ghost detecting app and was absolutely convinced that his dead cousin was trying to contact him from beyond the grave through a free iPhone app. Of course, he thought I was lying. I tried like hell to come up with some kind of explanation for what I saw, but I couldn't. I'm not going to say that it was a ghost or a spirit because I have no way of proving it. Electromagnetic fields can make people see things like that, but that doesn't explain the fact that I had a picture of it. I'm not convinced it was any weather phenomenon either, since it was a bright sunny summer day. Fireflies don't look like amorphous blobs of light on camera. Really, all I know is what it wasn't. Now, here's the kicker. In true fashion, those pictures are stuck on a phone and laptop that no longer work, though I am planning on trying to retrieve them at some point. Also, I don't believe the picture had anything to do with the computer or phone breaking. I've heard people say stuff about ghost pictures causing electronics to stop working, and both of those devices were pretty old, and they didn't stop working until years after I had taken them. Whether you believe me or not, I know what happened, and, well, that's it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight's second half as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And please, in case no one heard prior to me uh, sharing these experiences, I do make mistakes, and I admit to them. And I misread what the gentleman had typed out instead of saying b25 i said b52 because i don't know my eyes just must have squiggled them around um and it was a ham radio the gentleman used shortwave radio as what he was explaining but it was a ham radio and I did speak to him on the phone earlier today. I had seen in the comment section, some guy had said, it was an elk. I live right in that location. It was an elk. Now, DJ and his friend had clearly said that it was a paw and a tail, like a bushy dog-like tail. Elk don't have paws. And uh, the gentleman that I spoke to, clearly clearly stated again via phone conversation that the dnr agents said that it was a canine human-like creature and for those of you wondering you do need a ham radio license to listen the only time you don't is if your ham radio does not have a microphone with it so if your ham radio has a mic then you need a license I checked in how, into getting a license and I'm going to be getting my amateur ham radio license as we speak I'm going through the course now so with that my friends I hope you enjoyed this upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you I want to let everyone know I appreciate all the support you guys rock and uh well, be safe, and may the Great Spirit watch over us all, and may he guide us down that path that, well, we call life. <laughs>